MTS Tayyib spent time in Ramallah over the weekend, and he is back in West Jerusalem. Well, across the Middle East and around the world, we've seen massive demonstrations in solidarity with Palestinians. In London, over 100,000 people took to the streets of the British capital demanding an end to Israel's war in Gaza. There's also been similar scenes in Arab capitals, from Sana'a in war-torn Yemen to Cairo, where the Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, called for a, quote, day of rage just hours after his phone call with President Biden earlier this week. It was a phone call in which a deal was reached between Egypt, the U.S. and Israel to allow 20 trucks of desperately needed humanitarian aid into the Gaza Strip, which started arriving only yesterday. On the Israeli-occupied West Bank, the violence there is only getting worse. We were at one protest where we witnessed Israeli snipers shoot at least three Palestinians. Now, earlier, we spoke with Mustafa Barghouti, the president of the Palestinian National Initiative and a member of the Palestinian Legislative Council since 2006. I'm shattered. I'm angry, uh, mainly because I don't understand why this all should happen. But what breaks my heart so much is the suffering of civilians whether Palestinian or Israeli. And what I don't understand, why the President of the United States comes here and instead of telling Israel enough is enough, you wanted to respond, you responded, you already killed 4,000 Palestinians, stop. Instead of that, he's encouraging them to have an invasion, a ground invasion. So you think President Biden's visit was a catastrophic mistake? Catastrophic from three aspects. First, it was a huge political and diplomatic failure as I told you, because nobody wanted to meet with him except Israelis. Second, it's a strategic mistake because he's dragging the United States into a very dangerous area where war crimes are committed. And third, because he is consolidating the absence of peace process. Do you see a scenario where this ends? Yes, one scenario. There is no other scenario. Immediate change of the behavior of, of Western leaders who are now participating in encouraging Netanyahu to commit these war crimes. And, uh, to, and the United States is the only country that has the real leverage over Israel. And they should tell Israel, stop. Stop, enough. Let's have ceasefire. Let's have immediate exchange of prisoners so that all Israeli prisoners would come back home safe. And let's initiate a true peace process to solve the roots of the problem, which is occupation, and the system of apartheid. Now, efforts to create a Palestinian state have been at a standstill for years now, largely because Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's successive hard-right governments have been firmly opposed to it. And while the Biden administration continues to back calls for a peace process that would lead to a two-state solution, it's done very little practically and diplomatically to advance that goal. And after Hamas's brutal attack and a looming Israeli ground war in Gaza, it's a goal that seems even further away than ever.